kind of see which ones I want to take and which ones I want to drive in. And sometimes you miss one and you go out and complain when you're done, but one piecer is better than two piecers. Alright, well I haven't that ripped that off. Okay. So there's pretty close to the finished blade. It'll take me probably another 30 minutes to uh, completely finish it. And I'm probably going to come into here and come out and make some type of hardened looking point. But uh, this piece here is the 2007 pith point off of Paleo Planet. And this here goes to Michael Booth. If I don't break it before I get done. But uh, this is my pith point. This in here is going to Germany. So Michael... Merry Christmas. I just got to finish it. Alright, went ahead and knocked all that edge down again. So you can't cut nobody. Get rid of the fine edge. Now I'm going to come in, work my backwards check mark base, put my stem on it. It's probably going to be about, I'll probably take about that much. Of it. I noticed on all these pictures, if you uh, hold the point, yeah, that was a blade that fell. If you hold the point, flip my screen here, tip up. Then the left hand bevel is what you see. You're seeing this bevel over here. You're not seeing this. So as we hold those up, I call that a left hand bevel. Because that's the side I can see the bevel on. So we'll be beveling this edge on both sides. And uh, I'm going to put that check mark base on here. And All right. That over there in the Work pile. You always need reference material. Come back over here and this is going to be a problem here. This crack because we're going to be making a barb there somewhere real close to that. So I hope that crack doesn't interfere with our check mark. That can be the only problem I see with this piece. Let's go ahead and square this base off a little bit better and. Okay, squared that off, kept shooting flakes into it, I didn't just nib it off, I shot, actually took flakes up into it to keep it thin. I will take some more, but as I come in from the sides, you'll, you'll notice that, uh, that a lot of that thinned out anyways. Knock him out, John.
Boy, we've been so low on rain, this rain don't bother me none. I need some water. I can zoom in a little more for you guys. Why when I make a mistake it's multiplied. Magnified. Keep it ground so you don't crush it. Just don't blow off no ears or nothing like that. You want to make sure you kind of keep them. Kind of adds character to it, like the point type's supposed to be. So you don't want to remove anything that is needed. You know, the first video I think I ever watched on flint napping was a Jim Redford video. And uh, and it was how to make a harden. And I believe that was the first video I ever watched. So, if you don't watch them, you might, le you know, you might learn something just like watching these YouTube videos. You know, some of us crazy guys might come up with something that you might need. But uh, I remember watching him knock that rascal out, and I was like, man, that is amazing. And then after you flint that for a couple years and figure out a few things, it, it's pretty neat. Tell you what, it makes you respect those guys that can knock those killers out for sure.